Thanks again for joining me here at Preaching the Gospel That Saves, the station that is dedicated to our Apostle Paul's My Gospel, the Gospel of the Grace of God. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 is the Gospel. It's verse 1, it's the Gospel. Verse 2, it's how you're saved. Verse 3, that Christ died for our sins. And verse 4, that he was buried and rose again. It is not the Gospel of the Kingdom. The Gospel of the Kingdom will never ever save your dying soul. Repenting and being baptized and believing and confessing Jesus' name will never save your soul today. We are in a different dispensation. We are in the dispensation of the grace of God, Ephesians chapter 3, 2. And the gospel that saves us is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It is the gospel that God is going to judge us according to Romans chapter 2, 16. It is without works, Titus chapter 3, 5, Ephesians chapter 2, 8 and 9, Galatians chapter 2, 16, and Romans 11, 6, and Romans chapter 4, verse 5. And it's because of the death of his son that we are reconciled to God and that we are saved. Romans chapter, ver Romans chapter 5, verse 10. And he is now counting one trespass against us because he became, he who knew no sin became sin for us. 2 Corinthians 5, verses 16 through 21. And because we believe that gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, we are sealed until the day of redemption. Ephesians 1.13, we have all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places, not physical, spiritual. Ephesians 1.3, we have peace with God, Romans 5.1, so he's not beating you down if you sin, you have peace with God, okay? You are seated in heavenly places, you are complete in Christ, Colossians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. And it's all a free gift without boasting, without your works, and it's not of yourselves. Ephesians chapter 2, 8 and 9. So as we go through um, tithing part 10, reasons why the body of Christ needs to stop tithing, okay? The law requirements for Israel were greater than 10%. Deuteronomy 14, 28. At the end of three years thou shalt bring forth all the tithe of thy increase the same year and shall lay it up within thy gates. Okay, this is one example of the tithe increase every three years that was above the regular Levitical tithe. There are other required offerings also according to Malachi 3, 9, right? Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Again, if your pastor is using that Bible to guilt you to tithe, that's God talking about Israel, okay? Israel was robbing God, okay? Not you, not the church, the body of Christ, not anyone today, okay? You're not robbing God today, okay? Any sin that you have committed, if you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection, has been imputed on Christ, okay? Christ paid for all your sin, okay? So if they're guilting you that they're robbing God and they're guilting you that God is going to take it out on you and take you back to the woodshed, they are teaching you wrong and they're manipulating you to get money out of you because when you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection, when you believe that Christ paid for all your sins, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 21, Romans chapter 5, verse 10, okay, that he's not imputing your sins against you, okay, Romans chapter 4, Romans chapter 5, then you will understand that you're in Christ and Christ is in you and you're seated in the heavenly places. That's what it says in Ephesians, right? And you're sealed into the day of redemption and that you become part of his body and you're complete in him. So if he's beating you up, that means he's beating himself up. And that is just wrong, okay? Because you're in him and you're seated in heavenly places. That's where Christ is. And if you're in him, that means you're up there with him, seated in heavenly places, okay? So don't let them beat you to death and, you know, take all your money and don't let them tell you that, you know, God's going to bless you for all that you give. God's already blessed you 2,000 years ago. He died for all your sins. Okay, so don't add any more blessings to the once and for all blessing that he gave the entire world. Unfortunately, no one believes that. They think they have to add something to that. And every time you add something to that, that's the very thing that will take you to hell, okay? If you think Jesus did his part, and now you must do your part to get saved or stay saved, write down what your part is, and at the top of the page write, why I'm going to hell. 
because you're not trusting in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're trusting in his finished work plus what you need to do, and that's not trusting in what he did. Okay? So keep that in mind. Okay? Jesus steps up toward Israel in the Old Testament under the law, right? Matthew 19, 21. Jesus said unto him, If that will be perfect, go and sell thou, thou that hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Right? He steps up the tithe right there. Okay, so in Deuteronomy and Malachi, you had to bring um, a greater tithe than 10% every year, and it, there was an increase every three years, and then Jesus steps it up in his earthly ministry that you have to sell everything. Right, and then after he gives, after he um, ascends, and then sends down his Holy Spirit, what does he say in Acts chapter two, verse forty-five? He says, "The Holy Spirit steps it up again to the nation of Israel in the New Testament." Okay, because after um, he died and rose again, Acts chapter one to eight is all Israel, and it's. Peter preaching the guilt of the cross. There's no good news yet because Paul hasn't been saved yet. And the mystery has been hid. And the gospel of the grace of God is not known yet, okay, because it wasn't given to Paul yet. That's Paul's gospel, okay. That's why it says it's his gospel, my gospel, okay. So that's not known yet. So the Holy Spirit steps it up, steps it up and says to him in Acts chapter 2, 45, forget that 10th percent tithe, and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men, and every man had need. Okay, sold all, they had to sell all their possessions. Okay. Now, in the dispensation of the grace of God, where we are not under the law, where we have been given all spiritual blessings, not physical, and we are to set our affections on things above and not mind earthly things, this is how we are to give today. Ephesians chapter 3 2. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me, you to you, Lord. Verse 3, how that by revelation he made unknown to me the mystery, as I wrote a four and a few words. Verse 4, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Romans 6, 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Ephesians 1, 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Okay, If you're in Christ, sin shall not have dominion over you. If you are in Christ, you have all spiritual blessings. Okay, Colossians 3.1 If ye then be risen with Christ, if you're in Christ, then you're going to be risen with Christ. Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. And verse 2 Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Now, Let's go back to that tithe in Israel, Deuteronomy 14.28, Malachi 3.9, Matthew 19.21, and Acts 2.45. That's all about the earth. Selling your possessions and giving the, bringing your tithes. All your tithes and offerings in Israel's program were all about the earth. Okay, What does Paul tell us to do today? According to the revelation of the mystery of the Lord Jesus Christ. What is Paul telling us today about Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery? He's telling us not to mind earthly things. He's telling us not to set our affections on things on the earth, but to set them on things above. Okay, Philippians 3.19, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. So that church that's teaching you you need to tithe, what are they minding? Are they setting their things on things above? Are they setting their affections on things above? No. They're telling you to mind earthly things. They're teaching you to mind earthly things. And that goes against the dispensation of the grace of God. It goes against Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. It goes against Paul's my gospel. And that's what God's going to judge you according to. 2 Corinthians 9-7 is how we are to give today. And the way you are to give is to... Any ministry that is a that has a perfectly preserved Bible, the King James Authorized Version, that is teaching mid Acts dispensational Pauline truth rightly divided, because that's the only way to to rightly um, teach your Bible. That is the only way to teach your Bible. It's to study, to show yourself approved, and to rightly divide it. It's to keep Israel and the Church, the Body of Christ, separate. 
That is the only way you're going to know your Bible. And it has to be on a Pauline foundation, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Okay? According to Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery. So 2 Corinthians 9, 17. Every man according as he has purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. What is the definition of necessity? I'll let you look that one up yourself. Okay? And But bottom line, in all things, 1 Thessalonians 5.18, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything give thanks. Okay? So, if you are saved, you are a member of the church, the body of Christ, not your denomination, not your non-denomination. Okay? If you do something wrong in those places, they'll kick you out. God's not going to kick you out. Okay? If you sin... They'll kick you out. God's not going to chastise you for sinning. He took all that on the cross. Okay? If you don't serve in that church, you know, they might look down on you. Um, when you're in the body of Christ, you're serving Him. Okay? You're serving Him in spirit. You're putting off the old man. And you're walking in newness of life. That's how you serve Christ in the spirit. Okay? We are to set our affections on things above. We are to do things for eternity, for heavenly places. Okay? We're not to mind things of the earth. So think about what your church is teaching you. Think about all the tithes that you probably gave. You know, you got to remember, ignorance is a sin too. And if you're ignorant that, and you think that you need to be tithing, you need to look at your Bible dispensationally, rightly divided, Pauline, progressively, understanding your Bible, progressively, progressive revelation, God moving through the Bible and dispensing different things toward, God, toward um, His people. If you do not do that, if you think the verse back in Deuteronomy is for you today, you will do exactly what it says in Second Peter, you will rest the scriptures to your own destruction. And, and Peter gives us a great definition of what happens to people when they don't, do not understand their Bible. When you do not understand your Bible, you will think and believe what your pastor is telling you, that Israel's promises are for you, the tithes and offerings will get you a blessing, and ultimately, you will spoil the cross of Christ when he has given you all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places according to what he did for you on the cross. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 is the gospel. Verse 2, it's how you're saved. Verse 3, that he died for your sin. And verse 4, that he was buried and rose again on the third day. Thanks again for listening. Email me at buttonnowministry at gmail.com and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.